So what we have here is a bunch of masses M1, M2 and M3 and they're strung up the way it's shown in this diagram and the entire system is attached to a rigid wall. Another piece of information given in this problem is that the tension in the strings is T1, T2 and T3 and the values are also given. So the problem is asking us that given this information, what is the value of mass M1, M2 and M3? Now, how we approach these problems is to apply Newton's second law of motion on each of the mass individually, uh, which essentially means making free body diagram for each of the masses. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's take mass M1 and try to draw its free body diagram. Now you've got to remember that when you make free body diagram, you focus on the body under question. You do not bother about rest of the system and you apply all forces that are acting on the body for which the free body diagram is being made. So let's go ahead and see what are the forces acting on mass M1. And we can clearly see that there is the force of gravity acting on mass M1, which is M1G. So let's go ahead and label this force we can also see that M1 is getting pulled up by tension T1 because if tension T1 was not there, M1 would have just dropped. So there is definitely some force which is pulling mass M1 up and that's tension T1. So let's go ahead and label that force as well. So you have T1 over here. So let's go ahead and write Newton's second law of motion, rather the equation pertaining to it and which says that the net force acting on a body is equal to the product of its mass and the acceleration induced by that force. So for mass M1, we can see there are two forces acting on it. And let's also write the notation we'll follow for vector direction. So we'll say any vector pointing in downward direction would be negative and any vector pointing in upward direction would be taken as positive. So we have tension T1 pointing in the upward direction for mass M1 and therefore we'll take it as positive T1 and M1G is pointing in downward direction so we take it as minus M1G and this should equal zero because it's also given in the problem that the entire system is stationary. So if this is the case what you'll find is that M1 is equal to T1 upon G and we know the value of T1 is 10 Newton and for the sake of simplicity we'll take the value of G also as 10 meters per second square which gives the mass M1 as 1 kilogram. Now let's go ahead and apply the same equation Newton's second law of motion to mass M2 and once again we can see that the force acting in downward direction is M2G and we can also see that tension T1 is pulling mass M2 in downward direction. So while T1 is pulling M1 up, at the same time it is pulling M2 down as well. So let's go ahead and label this force as well as T1. And you can also see mass M2 is being pulled up by tension 2. So we label this as T2. Because if T2 was not pulling mass M2 up, mass M2 would have just fallen to earth. So now we have three forces acting on M2. So let's go ahead and write the equation. We have T2 acting in upward direction, therefore positive, M2G acting in downward direction, therefore negative, and tension T1 acting in downward direction, therefore negative. Again, mass M2 is stationary, acceleration is zero, so we'll equate it to zero. And what we get is M2 is equal to T2 minus T1 divided by G. And if we substitute the value of T2 and T1, what you get is T2 is equal to 40 Newtons minus T1 we know is 10 Newton. And if you divide this by G or 10, what you get is 3 kilogram. So we've just found the mass M2. Now let's go ahead and apply the same formula, the same method to mass M3. So once again, we can see that M3 is subjected to a downward force, a downward force of M3G. And it is also subjected to a pull of tension T2 in downward direction. And we also know that it is getting pulled up by tension T3. 
Now applying Newton's second law of motion to this mass as well, what we get is M3G is acting in downward direction. What we see is T3 is acting in upward direction, therefore positive minus M3G acting in downward direction minus T2 acting in downward direction and this once again should equal to zero because mass m3 is stationary and if this is the case then we can find that m3 is equal to t3 minus t2 divided by g and what we get is t3 here is equal to 80 newton minus t2 which is 40 newtons and then you divide it by 10 and what you get is 4 kilograms.